Hello, it is Monday, August 16th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. We're kicking off the week with what I assume will be a much simpler and gentler puzzle than we've had the last few days. But speaking of the last few days, there are some comments to address from yesterday's clues and yesterday's puzzle. There are a number of comments that... Um, number of comments discussing the Zagat Sagan misdirection that tripped me up for quite a while at the end of that puzzle, and I don't need to rehash that. Um, people had all different reactions to it, what they thought the answer might be, but there were some clues that have some more uh, straightforward uh, context that I can read. For instance, um, uh, Brennan Jordan points out that BTS, the K-pop band, Stands for Bang Tang Boys. I assume, he says, the letters are from the Hangul spelling of the name, which I guess is a romanization. I'm not very familiar with the Korean language, unfortunately. And speaking of languages, SL128 says, this isn't bad in the way the Inuit language answer was, but to be precise, the language of the Maori people is called Tereo or Tereo Maori. And he says, he points out that Maori is often used to refer to the language, which is why it's not as egregious an issue as the Inuit um, clue from the other day um, that uh, Michelle commented on in the comments. And then we have, uh, this isn't a correction necessarily, but it's a funny bit of trivia from Ethan W. who says, my favorite piece of Ipanema, Ipanema trivia, here referring to the, the girl from Ipanema, which was referenced in a clue yesterday, the song. He says, my favorite piece of Ipanema trivia is that apparently the name derives from the Tupi language words Ipa, pond, lake, pond or lake, and Nima, stinking. <laughs> so whenever I hear the song, now I can't get the girl from the stinking lake out of my head, and it really improves the vibe. So that is a good bit of context when you hear that classic crooning track. The girl from the stinking lake. Okay, so we're on to Monday. This is a puzzle by Freddie Chang. That's certainly a name I've seen here a number of times. And edited, as always, by Will Shorts. Are we ready to get started? Yes, okay. What a plumber, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> off to a great start. What a plumber might fix a leak in. I assume it's a pipe, right? To gear up, um, and then we have pina colada here. Cousins of 401ks, this is a United States financial instrument. It's a uh, company pension, essentially. And an equivalent of that would be the non-corporate version, the uh, IRA, the individual retirement account. So a trail is a path. To gear up is to equip, I assume. So let's look at these crosses that we... We've got Baghdad's land. Yep, yeah, Iraq. That makes sense. Here we have a universal code of ethics. <clears throat> I assume this to be natural law. Natural, yeah, nat natural law. More gray in appearance. So it could be ashier, more ashy. Active Sicilian volcano would be, <clears throat> excuse me, Mount Etna, right? Participant in a square dance. I think gal, as in guys and gals. To eye lewdly is to ogle somebody. A bearded farm animal, presumably a goat, a billy goat or whatever. What a kind gesture. Oh, how nice. A crossword just for me. Uh, visually challenged mister of cartoons. Mr. Magoo, that would be. A boggy tract is, of course, a marsh. Feathered outback runners. I assume this is emus. Late host... Late night host Myers, Seth Myers of the U.S. chat show, blank or thereabouts. So this is a slangy thing here. It would usually be a suffix-ish. You could say, hmm, this crossword has six dozen clues-ish. It's not really the best example, is it? Israeli submachine guns, that's Uzis. stick to is grit. A steady look is a gaze, is what I, I gaze upon these crosswords every morning. Organizing guru who asks, does it spark joy? Uh, this is the very trendy Marie Kondo. Get some extra life out 
got some extra life out of, sorry, reused, presumably. 365 DS, so that would be a, a gear. Uh, Anyo, I assume? Phrase starting a legal memo in uh, INRE, in re, which is uh, Latin, I suppose. Midwife's instruction, a midwife would instruct a, um, a mother in labor to push. Where ships arrive, arrive and depart, they would do that, each of those things, at a harbor. A quick-minded sort. Um, oh. Hmm. Oh, I see. I was thinking smart cookie, and then I was wondering, did I get marsh wrong? But I guess it's sharp cookie? I don't know that I've heard that particular formulation before. Let's check the crosses. Make fun of mercilessly. It could be could be rag on or rip on, something like that. Let's look at this cross and see. What wolves do at the moon? They bay, bay at the moon. Hitchcock film with a classic shower scene, Psycho. That reminds me, I heard um, uh, here in the UK, there's a very, very long running, many decades long running uh, radio program called Desert Island Discs in which notable people are invited on to share the music tracks they would take with them were they to be uh, indefinitely banished to a desert island. And it's been running for a very long time. It's been running long enough that Alfred Hitchcock was one of the guests before he made his film Psycho. So after his transition, after his transition to Hollywood, but before before Psycho, for instance, he was already quite successful. And um, there, I think the full interview does not survive, which is sad. I think the BBC in general had a process of wiping most of its most of its recordings, both uh, radio and television, for much of its early history. But there are about nine minutes of this Hitchcock interview on Desert Island Discs that survive, and he talks about making an upcoming film that he's calling Psycho, and it's sort of a surreal thing to hear, to have that direct connection uh, with the person who's making something that went on to be such a cultural uh, touchstone. So anyway, it's worth seeking out. Okay, so desire for a contestant on The Bachelor. Never seen The Bachelor. I would assume it to be a ring, but that doesn't fit. Is it a rose? Maybe they get a rose. That seems seems likely enough. So to make fun of mercilessly would be to roast somebody. Let's jump back. We skipped a lot of clues. Let's jump back up here. Christmas month, Xmas month. That's we've got two abbreviations in here, so the answer will certainly be abbreviated, and it's December. Blank planet, designation for Pluto. Probably a dwarf planet, I would think. I suppose there's been a controversy over whether Pluto is in fact a planet at all, so. If it is one, I guess it's a very small one. Put pen to paper to write. Uh, blank, <laughs> blank, blanc, Mont Blanc, um, an Alp, one of the Alps uh, mountains, but also a brand name for pens and watches and things. Like I for one. Uh, Ro this is a Roman numeral for one. So like, <laughs> it's a clever clue in that for one both means for example. In other words, this is a, an example of a Roman numeral, but also literally I is for one. So very clever. Info from a spy would be Intel. And Intel is an abbreviated form of intelligence. And we see that it's abbreviated because info is also an abbreviated form of uh, information. One of 27 Chopin piano pieces. This would be um, an etude, uh, which came up on a crossword recently. Uh, etude is a, uh, a short piano piece intended for study, so it helps exercise your scales and things like this. Um, I walked by um, a house where Chopin stayed in London. Uh, nothing important about that, just did that the other day. <laughs> Language group of Southern Africa, I believe this is Bantu. Lacking with of, bereft of. Things that gears and crocodiles share. Well, they both have many teeth. A Kia Sportage or a Ford Escape? Uh, well, they're obviously both car models. Um, it's worth also noting that put pen to paper, it occurs to me, I'm not saying this because I know what this answer is yet, but it's, but I, it just, before I think about it, put pen to paper could be present or past tense. It could be write or wrote. We don't know which it is. And I just say that because that opens up even further, that, that further, um, 
give some latitude here for whatever this answer is. Swashbuckling Flynn was Errol Flynn, famous early film star. Packing Heat, oops, sorry, I spelled his name wrong. E-R-R-O-L, not E. There we go. Pa if we're packing heat, we're armed. A need for tug of war would be a rope. A long-necked pair, this would be a... I actually don't know how to pronounce this. I've really mainly seen it written Bach, Bosch pair. Boss pair, Bosch pair. I assume it's Bosch. One who says that you're not on the ball. Oh, <laughs> very clever. Very clever clue. A flat earther. Someone who belongs to the bizarre flat earth conspiracy group. I don't really know even what you'd call it. Movement, I suppose they are. A brand of water named after a town on Lake Geneva. It must be Evian, right? A conger, for one. That's a kind of eel. Conger eel. Brand of bubble gum. Now, let's, let's come back to it. At the home of, and then we have FR, meaning French. And when you see languages abbreviated like this, it doesn't mean the answer is going to be an abbreviation. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why it is that way. But this is not going to be an abbreviation. It is che, C-H-E-Z. Uh, so che nous, nous meaning us, would mean our, our place, for instance. Um, ba, ba, ba. Oh, I see. So this would this is probably a compact car. Uh, so the rote is past tense. Sorry, the key is Portage or Fort Escape, compact car. Toward the stern would be, on a ship would be aft. It's blank good cause. It's for a good cause. To possess, um, earn maybe? Civil Rights Pioneer Park. Uh, oh, whoops. Well, this would be Rosa. So compact. I guess it's not a I'm not very familiar with these car makes. They must be, each one must be a compact SUV as opposed to a compact car, I suppose. So that's what that is. One half of the McDonald's logo is an arch, and together they are arches. Oh, to possess is to have, of course. Yeah, silly. A pivotal point, that's the crux. Yes. Often the theme of a puzzle is the, it's the crux of the puzzle. To cancel as a show is to ax it, you know, to cancel pretty much anything, I suppose. Brand of bubble gum. Oh, I see. It's bazooka gum. Um, King Kong and others are apes. Blank dead, Jim. Much parodied Star Trek line. He's dead, Jim. Singer Carpenter or actress Gillen. Well, Karen Carpenter, the uh, singer and drummer of the Carpenters. Jacket fastener. That's not a button. Could be a snap. Raison d'être would be reason to be in French. E-T-R-E, être, the verb to be. Uh, pizzeria fixture. Of course, you need an oven to cook the pizzas. Please allow me, if I may, if I may, I will fill out the remainder of this crossword grid. Oh, look at this. We have a theme, and I didn't even realize we had a theme. Um, let's see here. So speaking of which, or where the starts of 1630 and 45 across can be found. So speaking of which is surely on that note, on that note, let's look at the rest of this theme. So, oh, I see. Yes, these are different kinds of notes. So natural law, a natural note. A natural note is a, is a note that, it, that is not sharp or flat, which are our next two theme components here, sharp cookie and flat earther. A sharp note is when the note in question is a semitone higher than the letter. So a G sharp would be... Um, on a piano, a G, for instance, is a white key, and the sharp would be the black key immediately to its right. It is sharp. It is one semitone up. And then similarly, a G flat would be the black key immediately to the left of the G, just, just down. And then a natural G is when it's neither of those. It's just the note. All right. So anyway, that's what that is. Very clever. Assassin of old Japan, a ninja, I suppose. Heathland would be a moor. Uh, squabbling. So if, if two people have, are squabbling, if siblings are squabbling, they're really at it. And longs for would be yens for, and then we can look at these crosses. Button at the start of a Zoom call, very timely clue to join. And the B, the A and BA would be arts, a Bachelor of Arts. And that is the Monday puzzle. This was, I would say, even for a Monday puzzle, probably on the easy side, but but that could just be me, and I would be quite curious to know how you fared. Uh, we had a nice, fun little theme there. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't see the theme until all of, because the, the theme clue 
didn't appear until almost the very end of the grid, I didn't end up unpacking the theme. So it didn't help us out with, um, with any fills. Uh, but it's, it doesn't really feel like the kind of theme that necessarily would. It feels like a theme that is more there um, uh, for its own sake than necessarily as a strong solving aid. And that's perfectly fine, especially on a Monday puzzle. You don't really need all that much help on a Monday puzzle. Um, but let me know. Let me know how you fared with this one. Still got some, still got some daytime remaining on my heat activated transport for London mug. Always the sign of a slightly easier puzzle when that's the case. And um, I suppose that's it. There's, I don't know that there's really all that much to go over in this puzzle. Um, it was straightforward, but it was a nice, nice clean solve, and I enjoyed it. Thank you, Freddie Chang. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And if you're enjoying this series more broadly, you should subscribe to it so that you can be aware when these puzzles, when these solutions, solves, go up on the YouTube channel each morning. If you are, well, actually, if you're on Facebook as well, why not go like my page over on Facebook? It is a, it is a small and nascent Facebook page with very little activity as yet. So you could get in on the ground floor. For what purpose? I don't know but it felt like I should set up a Facebook page, so I did. And um, if you want to pass this along, maybe you could pass it along via um, via Facebook, I suppose, or Twitter or whatever. And um, someone else that you know on the internet might enjoy it as well. And finally, if you're particularly enjoying this series and you would like to contribute to its hopeful long-term sustainability, you can do that on my coffee page, where I accept donations of, uh, in an amount of your choosing, on either a one-off or recurring monthly basis. And thank you so much to everybody who has done so. It means a lot to me, especially the people who have signed up for that recurring donation that is extremely generous. And obviously I'm aware not everybody's in a position to be donating money, especially these days. It's perfectly fine. But thank you so much to those who have. And thank you simply for watching. Uh, I will be back tomorrow for another most likely relatively gentle puzzle on Tuesday as we continue to ease into the week. I hope you join me then. But until that point, have an excellent Monday. Take care. Mm -hmm.